friends, Hal here, Quail Studios Guitar. Let's talk a little bit today about note for note playing, about your playing, about quality of playing, because this is very important. One of the reasons that I teach the way I do is because I've been in situations where, you know, I had to produce a lot of music very quickly. Like I got a call from someone saying, hey, um, would you play lead guitar for our band? This turned out to be a very long relationship with this band, like a year and a half. And we played four or five times a week. But it started out with a phone call saying, I'd like you to play lead guitar for our band, and we need 30 songs in three weeks. And I said, great. How many songs do you guys know? And they said, none, because we're just putting the band together. <laughs> I went, are you practicing tonight? Do we have a drummer? No, we don't have a drummer yet. You don't have a drummer? Okay, so we put 28 songs together in three weeks. We went and played this gig in uh, Hemet, I think it was. I was living in Southern California. Hemet was about an hour away. And, uh, you know, it worked really well. It was great. But you don't learn 30 songs in three weeks, especially when you only know about three of them. You don't learn everything note for note perfect. You do as the best you can, uh, learn it as fast as you can, of course, the lyrics have got to be right, mostly, <clears throat> right? So that everybody knows what song you're singing. The chord progressions have got to be right. The timing has got to be right. And the really important parts of the song. For instance, if you're playing a song and uh, you want to, let, for instance, do you know the song? Began. Right? Do you know that song? It's a Neil Diamond song, Sweet Caroline, right? It's a very famous song, but it's not done with just guitar, and you don't find it with just guitar. You find it, um, was it an orchestra or something like that? Anyway, the recordings that Neil Diamond did, they weren't just guitar, so I had to come up with an arrangement for that. All right. Um, so what you want to do is you want to learn songs really, really well. And especially when you're playing a lead, you know, and, and you've got... That's a lead to Hotel California, the first few notes. But I'm not playing exactly like Don Felder did right there because I'm on an acoustic guitar. I've got 13s on this guitar. Uh, you know, they're not 9s like on an electric guitar that he probably used. And so I'm not going to bend everything the way he did. And you know what? If you take his lead in the live performance in 1977 at the Capitol Theater, is that what it was called? And they did the Hotel California. And you can look it up on YouTube, you know, the, the tour that they did. And you compare it to the original recording of Hotel California, you'll find that some of the notes are a little different and they're played a little bit differently. But that's because it's a live situation. The first time I went to see my favorite band, which was Jethro Tull, in 1977, I had really been into this band for four years. First time I ever got to see them, they were playing a song that I really loved called Aqualung, and I loved the lead on this song. So here they are playing Aqualung towards the end of their concert. And I'm listening to it, and the first part of the lead was good, and then all of a sudden the lead guitarist played different notes than he played on the recording. And it's like, he didn't play the lead. I was a little disappointed. You know, and, but I was, <laughs> I was a teenager, right? I thought that, that things needed to be perfect and stuff like that, but it, it wasn't perfect. That was the first time that I really got jarred to understand that artists don't play things exactly the same way. And you can check out live performances and recordings, and you'll find that over time they change. And sometimes they're never the same. And that's because, especially back in the 70s, when we were in the recording studio and we were putting things on tape, now you've got digital, you've got unlimited amount of tracks that you can use. It's like, oh, well, that was a really good lead. Let's keep that one and, and do another one, right? When you had eight tracks or 16 tracks or 24 tracks, and that was it, especially if you only had eight or 16 tracks, you maybe had one track, especially on eight track, you had one track that you could put a lead on 
And if you didn't nail it, you got to do it again. And you go over that track and do it again. And punching in, that was kind of precarious because what happens if the, if the, uh, the engineer accidentally punched you in too early and you erased a good part of what you did? You know, then you'd have to do the whole lead over again. So once you nailed it, once you like, oh, that was such a good lead, then you just kept it. That was it. You just kept it. You didn't do it again. And if it wasn't exactly what you intended to do and you made a mistake, but the mistake was pretty cool, and it was awesome or something like that, you just kept it. And you didn't go back and listen to the recording and learn that lead that you played that you made actually a mistake on that was pretty neat that you just kept. No, you just kept playing it the way you thought you were going to play it or something like that. And it usually was a little different. So that's the way that I've always, you know, learned songs. Um, I taught at uh, Sunhawk Academy, Sunhawk, yeah, I think that's what it was, down in St. George for 12 years. This was a drug rehab for, you know, teenagers between the ages of 12 and 18. And I did two music classes every week and I brought 150 songs with me every time, you know, uh, they were basically on three ring binders and paper. And so people would say, hey, can you play Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin? I'm like, yeah, sure. Can you play, you know, Santeria? Yeah, I can play that. Can you play this? Can you play Nirvana? Can you play, you know, some classic rock? Can you play, you know? And so I, I had all kinds of different styles. Um, I've learned songs from classical music to jazz to blues to country, to classic rock, um, to modern alternative and all that kind of stuff. If you're going to have that much music under your belt, then you don't have time to learn everything uh, note perfect all the time, especially if you're playing solo and you don't have a band. Then you've got to modify things. This is the bottom line. You want to be as perfect as you can. You want to play everything as well as you can. But don't get hung up on note for note stuff, all right? That's my philosophy. So on my channel, I'm putting my hand back here because it's buzzing a little bit. <clears throat> on my channel, when you find me playing and teaching things, sometimes it's not note perfect. But that's because I want you to become a guitar player that can play well, that can play lots of songs, that can play really good. Now, if you want to learn something note perfect, there's tons of videos out there from guitar players and teachers that will show you exactly how to play things exactly like the record. Go for it. <laughs> You're not going to always find that on this channel, but I will help you to become an awesome guitar player. All right, we'll talk to you later. Oh, by the way, I've got a Patreon page. You can come over and see me over there. Uh, let's see. I still haven't come out with the Quail Studios Guide to Music or the Quail Studios Lee Cheats book, but they are coming. All right, see you later. Take care. You can donate. Look in the uh, description for stuff. If you like this video, like it. You can subscribe and uh, hit that bell if you want to get notifications for new videos coming out. Talk to you later. Bye.